Welcome to the Western Canada High School IB program. Congratulations. Uh, you're going to have a great year next year. I'm here to explain all of the paperwork that we have to submit to help you choose your courses and get you registered for school. So one of the first things that you received was the welcome letter and it gives you a registration confirmation session date. If you can make that date, you don't need to do anything else um, to talk to the school. You just come to the school on that date, park in the back parking lot, and you meet in the cafeteria uh, just before 4 o'clock. You can show up sometime around 10 to 4. You'll have a file that you can pick up and uh, bring a pen and bring as many of these documents as you already have filled out. The other thing that it says on here is if you can't make that date, there may be an alternate date that we can fit you in, so please email Mrs. Cormier and, uh, and she can get back to you with an alternate date. One of the other things that it says there is uh, some information about the math placement test. Last year, we tested all of our incoming grade 10 students, whether they were IB students or non-IB students. And so generally, the IB students are going to get tested first. They'll get tested in January so that we have room uh, to test all of our non-IB students in May. So we've invited you to a math placement test on Monday, which is January 28th. It goes only from 4 till 5 p.m. Again, come a little bit early. The student coat can go directly to the main gym and the parents can come back uh, closer to 5 o'clock and meet them in the cafeteria. So students will need a pencil, eraser, a calculator, and a ruler is recommended but it's not required. Some of the questions that people have um, are how long it lasts. It's only a one hour exam. Where is it in the school? It's in the main gym. What is the test on? It's generally on critical thinking questions, using mostly grade eight curriculum because we know some students haven't done all of the grade nine curriculum yet. Uh, if you can't make it on Monday the 28th, uh, if you are planning on taking IB math, uh, you will be able to sign up for an alternate test date when you come on your scheduled registration confirmation session. If you are not planning on taking IB, we'd still like you, for math, we'd still like you to come on that date if you can. If you can't, again, that's fine. Uh, you can actually let us know when you come for your registration confirmation that you're going to write the non-IB placement test um, in May. And so we'll give you the date, we'll let you sign up, and uh, then you'll know exactly the same kinds of details. It's just going to be on a different date in May. Um, what is going to be on the test? I already mentioned the critical thinking grade 8 questions. You may wish to practice some of those math competitions or study some of your math, but we don't expect you to prepare for this test. Uh, we just expect you to write the test and we will tabulate the results. We will email out the results as soon as we possibly can. Uh, we are really hoping that we are going to be able to get those results out to families before they come to their February registration sessions. Um, and so if you get results that you like, um, you're going to want to sign up for Math IB and we will go over that later. If you don't get results that you like, uh, we can talk about that as well. But generally we would recommend uh, going into the regular math program. And, uh, and if you want to do Math IB, uh, there is something called uh, the Math Applications and Interpretation that uh, we can explain more when I talk about course selection. Okay, um, so that's the letter. You can keep that. Uh, one of the next things that you have that you're going to hopefully print, fill out, and bring with you is this uh, student registration form. And so most of you that go to a CBE school will already have one of these in your file. Totally fine. We're just going to get you to fill out one for us to make things easier because we don't get your records right away and we need to put things into the computer. So, uh, if you go to a CBE school, you'll have a CBE student number. 
You can find it on your report card generally. Most of you know it because of logging into D2L. Uh, you will also have an Alberta Education ID number even if you don't go to a CBE school. That can generally be found on a report card. If you can't find it, leave it blank. If you don't go to a CBE school and you've never gone to a CBE school, you can leave that CBE number blank. Uh, so your school withdrawal date will just be the end of June in 2019. Your last grade completed will generally be grade nine. And you're going to fill out your, your name and your birthday, your phone number, uh, where you live, and you're also going to uh, put in if you have medical information, and you're going to put in what school you are uh, going to register at. So that will be uh, Western Canada High School, generally grade 10. Uh, the start date, just put September 1st, 2019. Uh, the name of your last school, why you left, Generally, graduation is the date. Grade completed will be nine, even though you haven't finished yet. And you don't need to put the address of your school. We can look those up very, very easily. On the next page are the parent guardian information. And so we also would like you to fill out um, some other contacts that we can put in the computer for emergencies. And so if you could try to fill out all four of these, but have at least one person that you don't live with put down as an emergency contact, that would be great. On the next page, there's a little bit of sibling information. Um, and then, of course, some citizenship, Aboriginal, uh, ESL, and Francophone eligibility. If you have any questions about filling out any of this stuff, just leave that part blank and you can bring it with you when you come to the registration confirmation. And then on the last page, you're just going to uh, have your parents sign it and put the date of when you actually filled out this paperwork. So that's the student registration form. One of the other forms that you're going to get is a request for student records. Now generally, students who uh, go to a CBE school um, your records are just going to come automatically to us, but our um, student services secretary would like everybody to fill this out. And again, if you don't have some of the information like the fax number, it's not a problem. Um, we can look those kinds of things up very easily, but we do need you to fill this out and sign it. Otherwise, we can't transfer your kindergarten to grade 9 records. Okay. Uh, the next piece of paper that we're going to be looking at um, is this booklet, which is the uh, registration information booklet, and then we also have a course selection form. And so both of these are going to be looked at together generally. And so we have uh, a separate booklet for French Immersion IB and for English IB but most of the information is identical. And so I'm just gonna be using one of these booklets and I will be discussing French immersion and English at the same time. So uh, one of the first things you're deciding is whether you would like to try full IB or whether you would like to try partial IB right at the beginning of grade 10. So if you're a very good student and you find things pretty easy in school and you're looking for a challenge, uh, or if you'd like to study overseas and you're a pretty good student, then you're going to want to try full IB at the beginning of grade 10. Um, if you are a little bit nervous or if you're a really, really busy person, uh, or if you get a little bit stressed out by way too much work and deadlines, then you're definitely going to want to choose partial IB. So, if you were a full IB student, there are six categories of courses, and you need courses in at least five of those categories. So we call uh, the English language literature course uh, group one. So you will need to have an English IB class if you'd like to be full IB. You will need a second language as well. So we offer French and Spanish IB on our campus. We also have uh, an agreement with the Chinese Academy to offer Chinese IB on Saturdays. 
and so they do a very good job as well. Group three, we have three different courses to choose from. There's history, philosophy, or business IB. Um, history, you would register for social 10 pre-IB, or social 10 cohort IB is what we call it now. And for business IB, you would register for business one cohort IB, but you would also need to register for a social studies class because that's an Alberta education requirement. The next group is the sciences. We call that group four. And so in grade 10, uh, we have science 10 cohort IB first semester. That has mainly biology and chemistry in it. And then second semester, we offer our IB students chemistry 20 IB, and that has physics and chemistry IB in it. You can just take the first semester class. Um, if you do, then you will only have the prerequisite for biology IB that, that starts in grade 11. If you take the second semester class as well, then you can choose from any of those three sciences. You may be able to fit in all three, or you may choose just two. Most full IB students will only be able to fit in two IB sciences. The next thing is group five, which is the math IB. You're going to be the first year where the math IB curriculum is changing, and so we don't have a lot of details right now, but if you want to be full IB and you are recommended to take our regular math 10C class, you can still be full IB. So you would register for Math 10C, and then in second semester, you would register for Math 20 IB. So I will explain that when we get there. Then you need a sixth course. Um, you don't need it in grade 10 because Philosophy IB is offered starting in grade 11 or 12. And of course, your second science, you would choose starting in grade 11 or 12 as well. Um, but you might have history and business, or you might have French and Spanish. And so there's many, many different ways to be full IB. So everybody will have an English class. And then after that, there seems to be a little bit of choice, which makes, makes things a little bit confusing. So, if you flip to the next page, you can see what a regular non-IB student would take in grade 10, and you see what an IB student would take in grade 10. And so they would have English 10, you will have English 10 cohort IB, social studies 10-1 or 10-1 in French for French immersion students versus social studies 10 cohort IB or IB French for the IB French Immersion students. The next one would be Math 10. Math 10C is the course that we offer our non-IB students. And of course, if you're an IB student uh, that wants to take Math Standard Level or Math Higher Level, you're going to register for Math 10 Cohort IB. And then next, a regular student would take Science 10 and an IB student would take Science 10 Cohort IB, and everybody needs Phys Ed in grade 10, so that one stays the same. That's your only non-IB class if you're full IB, generally. Then, of course, if you're French Immersion regular, you will take FLA, but if you're French Immersion IB, you will take FLA 10 Cohort IB, and if you are a non-French Immersion IB student, you will choose French or Spanish or Chinese. There's no experience with any language necessary. So if you speak Hungarian, but you don't speak French or Spanish, please decide if you'd like to take French or Spanish and you can start from the beginning. The next thing that normally um, a non-IB student would take would be electives. And so we do have a nice electives list. You can see that on the side. So a non-IB student or a partial IB student would have many more of these elective choices possible. That is one benefit of going partial IB is all of our amazing electives. Um, but if you're a full IB student, 
Uh, we generally need you to work ahead in grade 11 math and grade 11 chemistry so that we can fit in all of the IB courses that you need to do over those three years. Uh, if you're not a chemistry or physics person, then you'll fit in an extra language or you'll fit in business IB. It also, of course, depends on your transfer reason for getting into the school, whether or not you will be required to take one of those down the road. So, we have many different ways of being full IB. And so, I mentioned it before, you can either be a two science full IB person, you can actually be a two language with French and Spanish or French and Chinese IB person or Spanish and IB. Or you could be somebody who likes a lot of social studies. You could have business and social studies, which is history, or you can have philosophy and history, or you can have philosophy and business. So there's many, many different ways. The other way that I haven't mentioned is by taking art, which is our only group six subject that we offer at Western. So we have visual arts, 10 cohort IB in grade 10. And then you would take another art class in grade 11, and you would take another art class in grade 12. And so um, the business and the art are a little bit newer, and uh, they are still academic courses. They're still going to be much more challenging than the art or the business non-IB classes. Uh, so you do want to be careful about which classes you're picking in grade 10, because sometimes there isn't a lot of room to move things around and change your mind for grade 11. On the next page, uh, it talks a little bit about partial IB schedules. And so a partial IB student really only needs to finish two IB classes to the 30 level, but um, if you're a French immersion partial IB student, one of those classes will have to be French language arts. You can pick more than two IB classes. You can pick up to all of them, I suppose, and still be partial IB. But uh, you will need to try to finish um, a minimum of two IB classes to the 30 level. And so where we run into problem is when people just choose math and science. And so if they're out of our boundary and the two they choose are math and science in grade 10, and then they find that those classes are not working out very well for them, then they're in a little bit of a panic to make sure they have two classes that they can finish to the 30 level. Some of the other things that I hear later on are people who choose classes such as English and social studies or um, you know, math and English. Uh, those students, you have to imagine that your Alberta grades could potentially be lower in an IB class than they would be in a regular class. And of course your math and your English grades and many of those other 30 level grades are very important for university admission. And so sometimes taking something like philosophy or business or art or French or Spanish as some of your IB classes helps take the pressure off of your admission average it also uh, makes things a little bit more fun. You're not just doing the hardest core classes that are around and, uh, to get your IB certificate. Uh, after the partial IB, um, basically we have a little blurb about math IB. So we used to have math studies IB offered to our students who did not want to take the math IB program. They wanted a, an easier program that involved our regular Alberta math curriculum, which is already very challenging. So now, because the curriculum is changing, uh, the math IB stream will be generally the same. The former math study stream is now going to be math applications and interpretation. So at the moment, we don't have a name for the second semester class but we would still like you to register for two math classes in grade 10 if you wish to be full IB with the regular math program. So you'll register for math 10C or math 10CF for French immersion, and you will also register for math 20 IB. There's no special name for your IB class for second semester yet, but we will know that you want to be in math 
um, applications and interpretation if you sign up for those two classes in grade 10 and we will manually be able to schedule you into that class when we know what it's going to be called. So, what happens if you try Math IB because you were recommended off of the mass placement test and then you decide it's too difficult for you? You will still have that option to transfer into that math applications and interpretation class for second semester. You will still be able to drop math and do partial IB. Um, you just need to make sure that if you start out with certain IB classes, that you're going to finish grade 12 with a minimum of two IB classes to the 30 level to stay in the IB program at Western. So we do let students change from full IB to partial IB. We do let students change from you know, more IB classes to fewer IB classes for a partial IB student, as long as there's room in the regular program for the next semester. You will have to complete the full semester if you choose that class and in very large letters in bold it says no class changes can be made after June 1st and so you won't be able to make class changes over the summer or in September because our our classes will be full so the classes that you choose in February and hand in are not set in stone but you will need to let us know if you're going to make any changes after February and we will make those changes ourselves and you cannot make any changes after June 1st for the first semester classes because all of our teachers, all of our classes, everything will be full. So that brings me to our course selection form. So there are some um, ideas on different classes and we will have guidance counselors, administrators, our languages learning leader, myself, there's going to be many people there that will help you choose your classes, but you're going to bring a working copy of this. And this is the course selection form for IB students. Most of it's already filled out for you. You just do some circles. So you put your name. If you have a CBE ID number, you'll write that in. And then what we want you to do is circle one course from each row. So you'll circle either English 10-1 if you're partial or English 10 cohort IB if you're partial IB but you'd like English or you're full IB. The next one is social 10-1 or social 10 cohort IB if you are interested in a philosophy or you're interested in history you're going to choose that class. Uh, math 10 of course, or Math 10 Cohort IB. And so you can be partial IB with no math, or you can be full IB with Math 10C and Math 20 IB, which is below. Um, or you can be full IB with Math 10 Cohort IB and Math 20 IB. The next one that it says down here is option number one. So if you're partial IB and you're choosing Math 10C, then of course you're going to be able to take an option instead of Math 20 IB. So that option list would be over on this side. So just pick one of these, your first choice, and put it over beside where it says option number one. The next one is Science 10. So Science 10 of course can lead to regular biology, chemistry, physics, or Science 20, Science 30. Science 10 Cohort IB can lead to regular chemistry, physics, and IB biology, or regular biology if you decide it's not for you. The next one says option two under the regular column, and that's because if you're partial IB with regular Science 10, you're going to save Chem 20, Bio 20, Physics 20, whatever I, science courses that you'd like to take, you're going to save those for grade 11. And so if you are full IB, this is where you have a hard decision. Are you going to take Chemistry 20 IB so that you can take Chem or Physics or both? Or are you going to take Art IB? If you take Art IB and you're full IB, 
Then of course you can only choose BioIB as your IB science course. There's Business One Cohort IB, and there's also where you would take either French or Spanish depending on what your other IB uh, language class is. So, I have a lot of people who say, well I want Business IB and Chemistry 20 IB. This is where you do have some choices that you can make for grade 10, but you're going to end up probably needing to work out your three-year plan to figure out if you can fit everything in. And so the three-year plan will figure out at the beginning of grade 10, but for now, if you want to choose Business and Chemistry 20 IB, or Art and Chemistry 20 IB, or Spanish and Chemistry 20 IB, uh, what you need to do is you need to say, okay, well, I can only fit eight classes in my timetable. Is there something that I can take in summer school? The easiest one to take in summer school, um, because it's a non-IB class guaranteed, is Phys Ed 10. Sometimes if people are taking business IB, they will take regular social studies. Regular social studies can be taken in summer school. However, anything that's an IB class cannot be taken in summer school. And so if you decide you'd like to take two classes in that particular row, you'll probably need to cross out social studies or phys ed and then plan on taking that in summer school. And our guidance counselors can help you figure out how to do that. The next row is phys ed. Most people will circle phys ed 10. You need it to graduate from the Alberta diploma. In the next row, that's where your language IB is. If you're a French immersion student, I've already pre-circled FLA 10 pre-IB, you must take that class. If you're a Francophone student and you think you have way too much French to take FLA 10 pre-IB, uh, I have to tell you that it is still mandatory for you to take that class to be in our French immersion IB program at Western. You can't skip ahead over that 10 class. And that's because of all of the Alberta diploma uh, curriculum that we actually teach in grade 10 that you will need to write that FLA 30 exam in grade 12. The next row um, gives you some other language options and so if you're not French immersion you're going to decide between French IB, Spanish IB, or Chinese IB. If you choose French or Spanish and you've never taken it before or if you just had a tiny little bit maybe a year or two, um, then you are going to circle French 10 Cohort IB or Spanish 10 Cohort IB. If you took it straight through junior high, 7, 8, 9, it was your option every year, then you are going to start at the 20 level, French 20 IB or Spanish 20 IB. If you came from a Spanish bilingual program, you will start with Spanish 30 IB. If you speak Spanish at home, you will start with Spanish 30 IB. If you have French as a second language from grade one to grade nine and you believe your French skills are very good and you would like to start with French 30 IB, we will have our languages learning leader at our registration session Please speak with her. Her name is Madame Bergerman. Same thing with the Spanish students. If you're worried about which level to sign up for, you may speak with Senora Bergerman. She speaks Spanish and she speaks French, and so she's the perfect person to talk to. If you are going to circle for, uh, Spanish 20 or Spanish 30, we would also like you to put over here Spanish Challenge. And so you will get invited to a challenge exam, I believe in May or June, so that you can get your Spanish 10 credits before you even get to Western. And so then you'll know for sure what your best course placement is in Spanish. If you're choosing Chinese IB, there's a section at the bottom that says Chinese IB plus elective. So you won't circle a French or Spanish class in that row. You'll circle Chinese IB because it's on Saturdays, you will need to pick an eighth class from the elective pile. And so you'll circle an elective and you'll put that down uh, instead of that French or Spanish class. The only other thing that's on here is the AM, 
band or the AM choir. And so we do have a few students who take both. Generally, band AM is at 7 o'clock in the morning on Tuesdays and Fridays for grade 10 students. Uh, choir might be on Mondays and Wednesdays or Mondays and Thursdays, uh, but it is offered in the morning at 7 o'clock for students who have full IB timetables. Uh, what you will see is there are many IB students who are in those programs and they do very well and they're very appreciated. And it's a great way to get your creativity uh, component of, of creativity, activity, and service, which doesn't officially start until grade 11, of course, but if you're in the band, um, you can automatically count that starting in grade 11. If you are um, not sure if you're gonna sign up for the band or the choir, you can also sign up for that in September, so you don't need to circle it right now. When you look at the bottom, that's where we need a little bit of contact information for you. And uh, in case we have timetable conflicts and we need to have the guidance counselors contact you. There's also some things on the side. If you have an IPP, uh, whether it's for a learning disability, a motor disability, or for gifted and talented, you can color that in or circle it. If you're English as a second language, you can color that in. If you're French immersion, it's already colored in for you. Um, so I believe that is all the information that I need to give you ahead of time. Feel free to watch this as many times as you want. Um, all of your questions will be answered when you come to the registration confirmation session. But if you have a really quick question, by all means, you can email me at s erivers at cbe.ab.ca. Um, the classes that you're signing up for are very rigorous. The principal will give you a little speech about that, the rigor of the program and the importance of committing to the IB program when you get here for your registration confirmation. That is one of the reasons why we need you here is we need you to commit to the IB program if you're going to register at Western. And uh, again, thank you very much for your time, and I look forward to seeing you very soon.